In the previous video, we made several assemblies from different languages, compiled them to .NET, .NET executed them. Key point from that video, .NET does not know about C Sharp, nor VB, nor anything except Microsoft Intermediate Language, which is native to .NET. In this video, I really want to drive home the differences between an assembly and a DLL or and or EXE. Okay, generally I say an assembly, you can think of it as a DLL file or an EXE file, which most of the time, yeah, you're safe, but let's see if we can take the IQ up a little bit and actually discover what exactly is an assembly. When I see the word assembly in that hideous MSDN documentation, what are they talking about? And what exactly does that mean? Let me see if I can draw first a little bit before we do that. Generally, when we compile our code, we create an assembly, but we generally don't care about that fact. We care about the fact that it's a DLL or an EXE, and if it's a DLL, I can reference it. If it's, a DLL, if it's an EXE, I can execute it. Well, without knowing it, when you create an assembly, you also create a module. And these are called .NET modules, if you would. And 99, I'm willing to bet over 99% of the uh, assemblies out there in assembly land are made up of single modules. However, it is possible to create an assembly that has more than one module in it. Okay, here's a module, and here's a module, so on and so forth. So we have several modules that are part of this assembly. Now Visual Studio does not support doing this directly. You have to do it through the command prompt, which is probably one of the reasons why most of the assemblies, or all the assemblies I've ever built or used on any team environment are single module assemblies. Okay, and I'm not advocating that you should start doing this, all right? But I do think teaching you modules and learning modules help you really wrap your head around what this assembly word really means. Let's see if we can actually do this. I'm going to come here and say console right line, hello. Okay, good old hello world example. And here I am in that directory where this is saved again. But you can notice from the previous video, I've cleared out all other files. All we have is main class.cs. C sharp compiler, pretty please. Compile main class.cs. And that creates our dot executable here, which I can further execute simply by typing its name. Remember I'm using tab to do the auto completion there, the tab key. But there's our hello. Very good. And then we can say, hey, uh, let's disassemble this thing. Uh, let's just dump all of its context to contents to a text file called moo and we're going to do main class.exe and then we can open up moo.txt and here you go here's here's our, our main class and here's our static void main and here's our hello and then we call right line all right don't let this code scare you and remember from the attributes and reflections videos attribute and reflections videos that everything that starts with a dot is metadata we don't execute anything that starts with a dot it's just data that sits there in our executable and it does absolutely nothing unless we wish to examine it and look at it either via code or via this reflector tool uh, go watch the SM, uh, attributes and reflection video if you really want to get into all those nitty gritty details okay I want to look at these dot assembly things Okay, there's a dot assembly here, there's a dot assembly here. What is the difference? One of these things doesn't look like the other. Can you tell the difference? It's really easy. It's the presence of one word between the two. Okay, it's this X turn right here. When we say dot assembly, this is a reference. Okay, when you add a reference to your project file, this is what the result is. It says, uh, well, when we add a reference, the compiler looks at the reference, but then at runtime it also says, hey, um, at runtime, we need this MS Core library uh, assembly hanging out somewhere, and we'll get into how that's searched for and found later. But for now, it's just saying, hey, I need it. Okay, It's external to this assembly. Whereas in this one, it's saying, hey, this is an assembly, and its name is main class. Okay, this is what is called the assembly manifest. I'll get into manifests in a different video, or probably a few videos talking about what's in the manifest, and why it's there, and why it's important. Okay, the only thing I want you to notice is, hey, this is an assembly, and its name is main class. And now I want you to notice this dot module. Okay, the dot module means, hey, this is a module. Its name is main class dot exe. Notice there's no dot exe on the assembly name. My uh, dot net does not care about 
uh, extensions, except in the case where it's trying to find the file. But other than that, it doesn't care about the extension at all. Whereas here it's saying, hey, there's a module. This is a module. Sorry, this is a module. Uh, the module's name is main class dot exe. All right, now if I do a control F for module, we'll see that that is the only presence of module there. So it's like it's announcing itself saying, hey, I am a module and my name is main class dot exe. Let's see if we can create more than just one module and combine it into a single assembly. So I'm going to go over here. Let's list the con. You know what? I'm going to just erase everything in there. Erase star dot star. Hit enter. Are you sure? Yep. Yep. Let's save this file to recreate it over here. So now we have main class dot cs back again. Let's clear the screen. Go over here, and I'm going to say class. We'll call it me first uh, module. And we'll come down here. Let's do public static void hello. And we'll say hello from module one. Save that. I want to now make a module file out of this. So let's go back here and C sharp compiler. <clears throat> let's set the target to a module. All right. Generally, we say library here for DL, library here for DLL, and I can't remember what you say for exe. We just leave it off in the defaults to exe. I'm going to say module. And the output file, just by convention, I'm going to call it me first module dot net module. All right, look at that file extension dot net module. That's purely a convention. I could call it uh, whatever I wanted to out here, but we'll just say dot net module. Then the input file is going to be main class dot cs. So main class, hit tab for auto completion, hit enter. The C sharp compiler grinds. And we're good. Let's look at the contents of the directory. We have main class.cs, but now we just created our first module. It's a .NET module. We cannot execute these directly. Right? They're not executable files. I can't I can't type in me first module, .NET module, and expect Windows to do anything with it. In fact, if I do, .NET module is not even registered with Windows. Windows is like, I have no idea what to do with a .NET module. Could you please tell me? All right, we'll leave that off there. I can't reference it like I do with DLL files. I couldn't add a reference to a .NET module. These .NET module files are useless unless they're part of an assembly. Okay, but they're still .NET code. And I can say, hey, hey, uh, let's disassemble Eldasm slash out moo.txt. Let's look at me first module .NET module. I can certainly disassemble them. It's still uh, a .NET file. Okay, but you'll notice there's a, we don't have a dot assembly without an extern on it. In fact, this is the only dot assembly in this file, and there's an extern on it, meaning, hey, we need MS Core Lib because we're using right line down here. But other than that, there's no dot assembly on it, and we'll we'll get to that later. Um, but this is a module. It's called me first module dot net module. Then there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Here's the code. Okay, me first module and hello from module one. So it's this module is just waiting to be used, but it's useless by itself. Let's 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 create more than one module. Let's do me second module. Okay, hello from module two. Let's uh, S. How about that? Uh, module two. Let's save that. Let's go back to our command prompt. Let's clear the screen. I'm going to use the up arrow to go through all these commands and see if we can find that C sharp compiler target module. Me first module dot net module. Let's say me second module dot net module. Run that, and then let's list the contents of the directory. We now have me first module and me second module dot net module. So this video is getting a little long. In the next video, I'm going to combine these modules in magical ways and see if we can learn something about what an assembly really is versus what modules are and why why we even use the word assembly anyways in, in the .NET framework.